Hello everyone. Today we're going to discuss how you can visualize uh, an image using the Earth Engine Cloud Computing API. To get started, let's go to Earth Engine, Google Earth Engine, and let's go to Code Editor there. Uh, this is the main uh, website, uh, Google Earth Engine, and then I'll go to Code Editor here, and I'll open a new Code Editor to run my uh, script here. So um, let's just write image visualization. Um, so we're gonna um, we're gonna load a Landsat nine data, a Landsat nine satellite image. Uh, we're gonna do um, filter by you know time um, and space, and also just uh, display a true color and a for false color composite. So before we get started, uh, let's just go to the Earth Engine data catalog. Earth Engine uh, data catalog. And let's go to data set to search for Landsat. We can click here, Landsat data. Uh, I'm gonna use a Landsat 9. So I'll just click here. And I'll use the surface reflectance data. Um, and I'll just copy that image collection ID. I'll just, uh, all right, where's that? Copy that here. Um, and I'll create a variable var image, and then I'll paste the image collection. So this is um, a Landsat 9 image collection, which covers the entire planet uh, and multi-year data set. So I'll filter that. Um, so when you're writing uh, JavaScript code, you need to declare a variable by using var. And now my variable is image, which contains uh, the image collection. We're gonna do some filtering here. Uh, filter date is an Earth Engine built-in function. Let's um, give it, uh, so what we're doing here is uh, we'll provide it the start time and the end time for this uh, Im image collection that we want to display or visualize. So I'll start with January 2022. You start with the year and provide the months and the date. And that's the start and the end date uh, for which I want to visualize the data is 2022. Um, the zero three, the zero one. I, that's about uh, three months of um, you know data. Another thing is because this is a, a large uh, you know geographic coverage which covers the entire uh, globe. We want to uh, filter by our study area. In this case, I'll provide filter bounds function, which is kind of limiting the data to this. Um, uh, uh, region of interest which we'll provide soon let's just first complete that and then um, again to this is not a, a sophisticated cloud masking but at least it will just um, give you sort the clouds uh, by cloud percent coverage and then we'll pick the first one so just for that pixel uh, a pretty easy way to get a cloud free pick you know image uh, so I'll apply the sort function I'll sort the data uh, and then my parameter for filtering, uh, sorting would be cloud cover, which is a metadata that's also within the image um, uh, itself as a, a metadata in the image property in the Landsat data. So I'll provide cloud cover, cloud cover as my parameter to sort the data. And then first, will function uh, should be small uh, first function will give me the first um, data or the first image within the entire um, the sorted uh, image collection so um, this function will give you um, a fairly very easy uh, you know way of doing a cloud um, um, getting the best cloud cover image with an, an image collection filter and by time um, and also a study area. Uh, so let's just give it a title here. Load Landsat 9 data. All right. 
Uh, but before that, um, mind you, you have seen here, I'm doing a filter bound here, ROI, but we don't have our study area or region of interest yet. So let's could um, generate that. Usually you can generate your study area by drawing some polygons here. But uh, for now, I'm gonna just um, provide my own already um, um, created a, a lot long location or point data um, instead of creating one. So I'll, um, I'll define my variable to store that uh, point data uh, or my ROI. I'll just give it ROI and uh, I'll, um, I'll pass, um, I'll use the earth engine geometry to uh, point function. When you give it a lot long information, it will create an earth engine geometry feature. So I'm gonna use that geometry uh, point. So that's an earth engine built in function. And uh, in this list, I'll provide the, lat the longitude and latitude. In this case, I already um, have this ready. So in your case, you can generate a new one. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So I'm providing the, la uh, the latitude information here for the point that, um, um, or the region of interest that I'm interested to visualize the Landsat data. Okay, so now we have our ROI and when we pass that ROI here, it should work, the script should work, okay? And let's just, um, you know, do a print statement here uh, of our image to see what, you know, the image looks like and what, uh, if, if it's doing right. Okay, so to execute our code, we'll go ahead and click run here to execute our code. As you can see, when your image is running, it shows you the result here. Because we're printing that image, filtered image, uh, we're gonna um, have some, you know, metadata and band information here. So we're gonna see the uh, Landsat 9 bands, um, as you can see here, the surface reflectance, uh, which means SR in a short form and B1, SR B2, that means band one, band two. So you can see band one up to seven here. And you also have the QA band, quality assurance band, aerosol band, and then band 10 here. Uh, and you have other, uh, you know, ancillary, you know, bands here. And when you go to the, med the image property, um, you have all of the, um, uh, metadata information stored in the Landsat image, uh, you know, ranging from cloud cover, for example, here, you can see cloud cover here. We've sorted the, the image using cloud cover here, right? So that's what we're getting from the image. We're getting the metadata information um, from the image itself. It's provided um, by uh, the, the Landsat production team. And you have a lot of data, you know, information, um, like metadata information for the, the Landsat uh, satellite data, you know, you know, data information, um, you know, cloud cover, there's a lot of data here. So depending on your research or interest, you can um, use some of this information for use, um, uh, your, your project, okay? Okay, so next thing is, um, now we have, um, you know, our image. And then last thing is, I think, uh, we have this ID, right? So in the image collection, every image has a unique ID. So for this image collection, um, this is the image ID. So for example, if you type in, instead of this image collection here, if you replace this Earth Engine E image and then provide this, you can simply use that to display or just visualize that. So this image collection ID is independently, you can access this independently without uh, even the image collection. But, um, so it's Landsat, LC09, Landsat 9, collection two tier, um, tier one and level two. That's um, uh, the, the part of action, uh, you know, uh, and also specifically that image ID. Um, so, um, yeah, so until this point, this is the image collection ID, right? So all of this um, is image collection ID. And this is the specific image ID, all right? Okay, so let's just go ahead and create our uh, map display using the Earth Engine uh, built-in function add, um, you know, map add layer. 
I always use that here to quickly display what um, my image. I'll pass um, my already created image here. And so I need to provide, you know, the bands that I, so I'm gonna create a true color composite, which is, um, you know, red, green, blue, right? Uh, traditionally. So I'll provide the uh, specific bands that I'm using, uh, I'm using in this uh, uh, map display. And then I'll create a list of um, bands that I'm gonna use in this collection. Um, so as I told you, if you wanna uh, know what bands you have, um, the name sometimes is SRB2 or sometimes it's B2, right? So just to make sure you can see here the different bands, so I'm gonna uh, write um, as it is um, uh, existing in the product uh, property. And then SRB, actually I need to define the band, um, specific band name. And then another one is I'll provide band three, SRB3. And then um, let's store another one here, SRB2. Okay, so now we have our band um, uh, information. Uh, so the next thing is to um, provide, let's just uh, provide a minimum and maximum for our display. Uh, minimum value, that's the maximum surface reflectance value. Uh, it's not rescaled, uh, so just uh, the raw data. It also um, provide a name for this um, uh, image layer. As we can see it here on the map canvas, um, we'll, we'll see this layer name um, displayed. So I'll see, um, I'll say true, true color. We're doing a true color composite. Uh, right display right three two or three two uh, that way we just uh, remember and then let's see I think we have some uh, let's see what's going on do we have any ear here um, all right we've closed it here okay uh, minimum maximum um okay and then it's showing me an error i'm just figuring out where this error is okay i think i don't think uh, there is any error let's see Okay, I think that's the typo. Okay, instead of uh, writing the whole thing, I'll just um, copy paste that. And then here in the second one, what I'm doing is I'll, I'll do a, a display, but in this case, I'll change the bands to, you know, instead of band 432, I'll change them 543, true color composite. Um, I'll include the near infrared band, right? So four and then three and then instead here I'll say false color okay and then let's last thing um, just to adjust the zoom level I'll, I'll usually uh, like to do center object image so I'll zoom into specifically to my uh, <clears throat> Landsat image. So now let's go ahead and execute this. Okay, something is wrong here. Oh, map center object. Oh, there's a typo. Okay, should work now. Excellent. All right, so yeah, now we have uh, properly um, imported our image collection and filtered it. 
uh, generated our image, um, the base cloud, um, um, be, uh, you know, uh, cloud free image or uh, an image was um, a lost cloud cover. Um, and we have, you know, displayed two different um, uh, color composite, the true color composite, which is this one and uh, the false color composite. Um, so th this is specific image um, um, is showing a false color composite. So technically that's how, um, you know, you can uh, display um, an image or import an image collection and generate um, an image um, doing simple, you know, cloud uh, masking filtering by time and also region of interest and generating a true color composite and a false color composite. Uh, one of the things, the difference between the true color composite and the false color composite is that a true color composite uh, RGB is something like a color that mimics what you can see in the real world. Uh, for example, vegetation will look green, water blue, you know, and um, soil or uh, rock will just you know, look brown. So it's more like what you see uh, in the real world, it's pretty close to that. And in a first color composite, because you're changing the band to, um, you know, near infrared, you include the near infrared. So you see um, some vegetation cover uh, in red. Um, so that's the, the main difference between the true color for composite and the false color, especially when you're using the near infrared to display. So that's how you uh, basically do a simple um, you know, importing an image collection uh, and generating a display of a Landsat 9 satellite image uh, on the Erzingen cloud competing platform.